So this video is going to be on the landmarks, a little bit of a lumbar puncture procedure overview, uh, talking about some anatomy so that you guys can have a higher uh, success rate on your LPs. Uh, this is a very difficult procedure and unless you know uh, some of the potential pitfalls and what to expect when you're doing the procedure, uh, it can be quite difficult and challenging. So hopefully this video will help mitigate some of those pitfalls. All right guys, so it's really important when doing a lumbar puncture to be able to visualize what's underneath the skin and if you encounter bone, what part of the bone you're hitting. So in my opinion, it's a good idea to be able to draw in your mind and be so familiar with the anatomy that you know potentially what bone structure you're hitting. So we're going to start off just by drawing a lumbar vertebrae here. And this is just Real quick sketch, we are somewhat symmetrical here. So this is pretty much a lumbar vertebrae. You've got your spinous process, you've got your uh, inferior articular processes and your superior process as well. Here's your transverse process. So once you start stacking these together, just kind of repeat the image here. And you kind of start to see how they measure up. Then what's revealed underneath is right here. It's your target. Oh, here's another spinous process here. We get progressively bigger with the vertebrae as we go down. All right, so this is ultimately our target right here. The spinous process is probably going to jut out a little bit farther down. So we're looking at this space here is going to be our target when doing a lumbar puncture. So that way, when we come at our target, the first structure we're going to hit is going to be our spinous process. So we know that we are, in this plane, too far up or down. Now, if we go further down with our needle, uh, three to four centimeters, and we hit another bone structure, we know we're probably no longer at the spinous process, and we're hitting either this inferior articular process here, or we're hitting the superior processes here. Um, <clears throat> sometimes we can ask the patient, does this feel like it's on the left or right side when we're hitting it? And sometimes they can they can say as well. So use your patient as a cheat sheet as well uh, to maybe have an indicator as to where you are um, in space. So you can either redirect left or right um, in that scenario. Uh, and depending on how deep you have to go, I mean, you could start off here on this side and then end up way over here. So it's really important to uh, make sure your positioning is good and to have a good idea of where your landmarks are and then what to expect if you do encounter bone. So now we got the visual stuff down and as far as the tactile elements the first thing we're gonna hit is the skin and that's the skin right here and then what's next up underneath that we've got depending on the person we've got either a small or large amount of adipose tissue is our next round. Then we've got our first potential pop into the skin, which is our supraspinous ligament. And a lot of people think that that first pop, they may be in the space, but we're gonna know better than that because one, our depth, and then two, we know that there's likely gonna be a second pop and there's several more ligaments to go through. After that, we've got our interspinous, ligaments and this is actually the ligament that covers the spinous processes here. So this is all covered and protected by ligaments and then finally our last ligament here is the ligamentum flavum. Ignore my handwriting there and that's the last pop to get to our CSF fluid which is here. So it's really important to know the layers that you're penetrating to get to your CSF space. It's important to know the tactile feel of what are the certain like pops and sensations you can feel while getting to the CSF fluid, as well as what uh, osteostructures you may encounter on your way and trying to get CSF fluid so that you can redirect your needle to have a successful lumbar puncture. So notice that I have my needle here and I got my bevel pointing off to the side. You know, if we were to come here straight in, I'm going to hit a spinous process. I'm going to be a, just a couple centimeters deep. And now that I know that I'm a couple centimeters deep, I know that I'm likely 
that my plane in the up and down axis is not right. So I can either, so I can come out of the supraspinous ligament and redirect with a tilt, then start to progress forward. And if I were to do just that, I'd be in the right space and I'd be able to get some CSF. And then alternatively, if I started off a little bit to the right and I hit this, what am I hitting now? Well, I know I'm pretty far into the skin. I'm a several centimeters deep and I'm hitting a process and then I can palpate my landmarks as well and realize, okay, I'm likely hitting the, I'm hitting my right inferior articular process. So if I'm hitting in the right, I back up all the way out of my ligaments and then redirect my needle. And the other spot you can hit, so you can hit the superior articular processes. You can also hit the lamina of the vertebrae off to the side here. And then you can completely go off to the right here or left and just completely miss the vertebrae altogether. Uh, that can happen if you have a you know someone who's not positioned properly or has a lot of adipose tissue and just poor um, anatomical alignment. But if you notice, like these spaces aren't very big. So you're likely to encounter bone while doing an LP at some point. If you just happen to get it on your first one without encountering bone, you're lucky. Uh, so it's important to know that when, when you do hit a bone, you know how to troubleshoot. So that's why this exercise is so important. I'm going to keep posting more of these videos so that we can continue to get better and stay tuned for more.